and invite her to the stage. Hey, Kelly, good to have you here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I, you know, I actually think that this is going to be an awesome, like, follow on from our, you know, previous two conversations, because one of the things I asked in my Facebook this week was, if you had to make $10,000 in a week, what would you do? Not doing anything illegal. And, you know, what I found was really interesting was that a lot of people, some people had answers, like I would put together this package and I would do this and I would do that. And there were a lot of people who were like, I would basically curl up and die. And I'm like, wow, that is just so much fear. You know, when there's lots of ways out there to make that income and do things. And I feel like they need somebody like Kelly to get over that fear of the unknown, not knowing how to solve the problem and get started. So welcome Kelly to the stage. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and give you the, the full screen here. All right, thank you so much, Haley. Yeah, I'm super excited to talk to you today. What I'm gonna share with you today may be a little bit different than uh, what you just heard, though I have an affiliate program, so if you like me, you can make some money <laughs> with me too. But I want you to think about, um, Think about yourself when you were a little, a little person, a little kid. Think about yourself when you were, when you were fearless, um, when you didn't think about how you were going to look or how you were going to sound, but you just uh, were loud and and proud and had fun with everything that you did. Um, for me, that was a ride around. I was six, seven, and I was so willing to just be seen, so willing to sing at the top of my lungs, um, so willing to uh, steal the, the limelight wherever I was. And then as I got older, that changed. And I started to retreat in. I started to hide from um, people and from situations and started doubting myself and started downplaying my capabilities and stopped giving myself permission to live the life that I wanted to live, to do the things that I wanted to be doing. And I lived that way for a while. Uh, and it wasn't until I was in my late 20s, I had just moved to Georgia from California, and I was having my second child. So I was home uh, with two, you know, small kids. Um, I was on the opposite side of the United States from all of my family and my friends. And my husband was at work all day and I, I didn't have anything to do. And so I was watching TV and I watched this show called Starting Over. It was this show, one of the first reality shows on TV. And it was two life coaches and a psychiatrist. And they helped women through their issues and um, they would be on there for a certain amount of time and then graduate out of the house. And then somebody else would come in and we have new issues to work on. One of those life coaches was Rhonda Britton. And I just, uh, I, I just loved, I loved her. I loved the exercises she gave. And so they went on a mall tour and I went to the mall of Georgia and saw them. And I jumped way out of my comfort zone and joined a book group. While I was reading this book, which is called Fearless Living, uh, I discovered that by doing the work in that book, um, I was changing my life. Me, I was changing my life. And so I got a coach and I started working with a coach. And at, at that time, my, my life had kind of blown up. My husband and I had separated. I'd gone back to California. I had a two-month-old and a two-year-old. And I just had no idea what I was going to do with my life. And as I was working with this coach and, and learning these skills and these strategies, I was able to call myself on all of these stories that I had been believing, all of these stories that fear had been telling me were true, but they really weren't true. And I was able to support my husband in seeing the stories that he was creating about our relationship and about how I felt about him and how he felt about me and our family. And we were able to work together and get ourselves back together. And we've been married now for over 22 years and we have six kids. Um, and 
uh, none of that would have been possible without the skills and the tools that I learned from Fearless Living. And I decided that that time that I wanted to be a coach. I wanted to support people to overcome their fears, to live the life that they want to live, to give themselves permission to have as big of a life as they want to have, to go after those big, scary dreams, to be able to um, speak out loud and share the things that they're passionate about and to do the things that um, just seem so far out of their comfort zone that they would die if they had to do them. I, um, these are the things that get me excited um, to see people change their relationships um, with themselves and with the people around them and with their life to begin to start to love their life. And one of the tools that I learned right at the beginning and that I told myself over and over and over and over again all day long was, are you making it up or is it true? I was making up so much stuff. And the reason why we make up stuff is because our brain likes a full picture. It wants, it wants every piece of that puzzle inside the picture. It, it doesn't want a missing piece. And so we don't always have all the facts. And when there's a missing piece to that puzzle, it makes something up and it puts it there so that it can look like a complete picture. But if we don't analyze it, if we don't look at it and we don't judge each piece, then we can get stuck believing that that fake piece is a real piece. And then we start to play small. We start to diminish. We start to take away um, our permission to, uh, to do what it is that we want to do. To, to start a business, to, um, you know, be loud and proud about it, to, um, you know, starting a new program or giving a talk or whatever it might be. Um, there might be some of you out there thinking, oh, I could never say yes to Haley and come on here and speak. But believe me, you can. Uh, I... Before all of this, if you would have asked me if I came on, I would have said absolutely no. But because I have been daily taking steps and questioning those stories, I'm able to be here today. I'm able to speak to you. And uh, Haley asked me yesterday. So I was able to just be an immediate yes. And that is something that I'm able to do because of the daily practice of saying I am capable. I can trust myself. Um, another tool that I use on a daily um, basis is a tool called acknowledgments. And you may be familiar with this idea, but as we do it here in Fearless Living, is we say, today, mm -hmm. I acknowledge myself for. And it's something that you did. It's a step you took. It's a thought that was a new thought. Um, it, it can be anything from small to big, something that you did that you want to acknowledge yourself for doing. And sometimes it's, uh, today I got out of bed because some days it's hard to get out of bed. And sometimes it'll be, today I spoke for the Women's Entrepreneur Network, right? So um, whatever that is, you want to acknowledge yourself for it. It builds your confidence. It builds your trust in yourself and it moves you forward. It expands your comfort zone as you do those things. Another thing that I do every day is I write five gratitudes. And those are things that are completely outside of me. They're things that I had no control over, things that people did. And I am looking and acknowledging that they did them. So, you know, a beautiful day, the sun coming out, um, rain, uh, you know, uh, my child's smile, um, a hug right when I needed it, um, my husband making dinner, uh, the kids actually emptying the dishwasher after the first time I asked, right? There's all different things that we can be grateful for. And we write five of those a day and five acknowledgements a day. And I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to 
look at your day and say, okay, what are five things that I can acknowledge myself for today? Entrepreneurs, we're doing things all day long to further our business. And we also have personal lives. Sometimes we also have other businesses or, or jobs that we're doing. We're not just doing one thing, right? So there's all these different areas in which we can acknowledge ourselves and we can be grateful for. And as we do that, we shift our belief in the fact that the universe is for us, that it wants our success, uh, that um, things can come easy and uh, that things don't need to be a struggle or a challenge, but they can come easy and be um you know, lift us up and brighten our day. And um, all we need to do is see them and recognize them. Uh, And the acknowledgements shift our thinking into um, knowing, uh, having confidence, knowing that we can trust ourselves to be able to handle whatever situation comes our way. And trust is a huge thing for me. You can see it in my, oops, sorry, we're flipped. You can see it in my, in uh, my poster behind me. It's a really big thing for me. So what's a really big thing for you? You know, maybe courageous is a word that resonates with you or being compassionate with yourself resonates with you. Um, Whatever it is that resonates with you, um, you know, focus on that. Focus on trusting yourself, being compassionate with yourself, being loving with yourself, generous with yourself, um, authentic. Um, you know, whatever it might be, focus on that and acknowledge each time you make a choice to do, to do that, to show up in that space that you that you want to create for yourself, the person who you want to be basically. So those are tools that I use every day, every day I use those tools. And I know that if you use them, that it will start to shift your, your whole life. And that might sound like big. You might be, oh, Kelly, whatever. I've heard those things before, but I'm serious. Doing those three things will change your life. Um, But I want to share one more tool with you. And I hope I'm not overwhelming you with tools. Tools are my jam. I love sharing tools and strategies. Um, If you uh, work with me, you're going to get a ton. um, Because I want you to have what you need to have. So that in those moments when you get triggered or something gets in your face and you don't seem to be able to get past it, I want you to know what you can do. I want you to be able to pull this this tool out of your back pocket and use it and keep moving forward and not let fear stop you. So the tool I want to share with you today is called Stretch, Risk, Die. And it is a tool from Fearless Living. And I want you to picture kind of like a bullseye. So the middle of the bullseye is your comfort zone. And that's what is known. So it may not be comfortable. It may not be something that you like, that you do or you don't do. But it's what you're doing now. And that is your comfort zone. One ring out is your stretch zone. It also can be known. It's also known as your beat up zone. Because you um, might. You've done these things before, but you're not currently doing them. So you beat yourself up a little because why can't you keep doing it? Why can't you be more consistent? Why can't, right? Our fear keeps keeps beating us up um, because we're not currently doing them. So one ring out from that is our risk zone. Those are things that we haven't done before. We might need to ask help. Um, That can be a scary thing to ask for help. We might need to do some research or... Um, you know, there's different aspects of it. It's not something that we've done before and we don't know we'll be successful at it. Um, and so that's our risk zone. And then everything outside of that is the die zone. And the die zone just means that you, it's so far from you that you just think you would die if you had to do it. And, um, but those are the exciting things, you know, those are the things that we want to bring closer to us because as we experience expand our comfort zone those things come closer our stretch zone becomes our risk zone our risk zone um sorry no i'm going the wrong direction our die zone becomes our risk zone and our risk zone now is a stretch and what was once a stretch is now in our comfort zone and so everything comes closer as we take risks and expand that comfort zone to be bigger and bigger and bigger 
So I want you to think of something that you have in front of yourself right now. I want you to think of the different things that you're going to need to do to accomplish it, right? Maybe it's go live on social media more. Maybe it's um, getting a little bit more in depth with your with your content. Maybe it's creating a new program or um, asking to speak at a new uh, in, at a new venue. Maybe it's you know all these different possibilities, right? With entrepreneurs, depending on the business you have um, and the visibility that you're wanting. So take th these these tasks that you have in front of you and map them out on the on the structure side. Are they in your comfort zone? Are they stretches? Are they risks? Are they dives? Figure out where they lie because if you're not doing them, then there's fear involved. So how much fear is involved? Is it a risk? If it's a risk, you're going to need some help to get it done. So don't beat yourself up for procrastinating it or uh, leaving it um, for another day. Um, you know, it, it's a big deal if it's a risk. Okay, so you might need some help or some accountability or you might need to find a mentor or, um, you know, there's lots of different possibilities of how we can make those risks easier to take. So we want to we want to break down those risks into more of a stretch so that we can more easily walk our way towards it. And then once we've done that risk, that die is closer now and it seems more possible. And it may just be a little bit more stretch or a, one or two more risks. And then we're there and we've accomplished it. And now we have even more in front of us that we can see that we want to accomplish and we want to do. This is how we baby step our way past fear. Because fear, a lot of the times people think of fear as the boogeyman, um, as this force that's wanting us to, to fail or wanting us to be unhappy. But really fear loves us. And that can be a totally different um, perce perception to have a fear. But really, fear loves us. And it's one job. Its main job is to keep us safe. And when we step out of that comfort zone, it doesn't know if we're going to be safe. And so it wants to keep us safe. That's what it wants to do. And so it's going to remind us of the past. It's going to bring up. You know, all those times when it didn't work out or someone was mean to us or we fell and scratched our knee or we were laughed at or whatever it might be. It's going to bring up all of those memories. It's going to bring up all of those emotions and feelings inside our body. Um, just like if you think you saw a snake and you want to get out of there fast, our fear can affect us with emotional fears that way as well. So you're asked to speak and you get all scared and you want to get out of there fast. It's the same thing, right? But really, our fear doesn't know, right? It doesn't know that we've grown. It doesn't know that we've learned. It doesn't know that we have all of these new skills and tools to be able to handle these situations differently. It doesn't know that this is a different person who has different values than the other person who hurt you right? It doesn't know all that. All it knows is that you're about to step out of your comfort zone and it doesn't want it. What I try to think of fear as is kind of like a helicopter mom. Now, this might be because I'm a mom of a lot of kids and I can have a tendency to be a little bit of a helicopter mom, but a helicopter mom, if you're not familiar with that term, it's kind of that mom that hovers, right? She's kind of hovering over the kids, trying to make sure that nothing ever happens. They never fall. No one's ever mean to them. You know, they're never, um, they're never on their own, right? They're always protected. They're always um, being watched over and they're always safe. Okay. And that sounds lovely. But if, you're, if your mom is always on top of you, and you don't have that experience of falling and skinning your knee, then you never know. You never know. You never learn. You never grow. Right. And so we need those experiences. We need those 
uh, times when um, we do fall down and then we get back up and we learn that we can get back. So I would love to uh, talk to you so much more about fear, um, but my time has come to an end. But uh, I would love to uh, share more about fear with you anytime. That was just so perfect. And I think that what I see a lot of people run into is that they want something, but it's so far out there in that die zone that they don't even believe it's possible. Yeah, but it is. Mm -hmm. it, it absolutely is. And that, that was my point the other day with my question about if you had to suddenly do this, but I think what it is, is for so many people, it's so far out there in the die zone that they can't even see it. It's, yeah. it might as well be in the clouds. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. This was an awesome set of tools an awesome talk. Thank you so much, Kelly, for joining me today. I have loved listening to you talk today. I've got you like on speaker and I'm like hanging on, on my TV, on my screen. I am so happy to have you here. Y'all let's give Kelly a round of applause. Thank you. Let's tell her. Thank you. Let's give her some love in the chat. And thank you so much for being here, Kelly. And with that, I'm going to switch speakers and we're going to switch over to um, Pamela and welcome.